probably heard of me or not, I'm not sure. And uh, today we'll be talking about something called as testing in Agile, which is another trending topic these days because people have been transforming to Agile and having several questions to accommodate all the traditional practices with contradicting nature of Agile, that how exactly we would like to have everything being in a very formal way, but not so formal again, right? So before we get started, I would like to just take a moment to introduce myself, uh, where I've been into training for a long time. I have been delivering sessions for corporates and professionals. I myself is a ISTQB test manager certified, and in fact, I'm really good to see the Mercedes Benz team. I have been doing sessions for them for ISTQB. A lot of members, I think, uh, I've delivered around seven sessions for the team in Pune and Bangalore, right? And uh, it's really uh, been a great journey so far because we are the professional instructors. We don't do it as a part-time. It's being passionate about delivering the session where we understand the people, understand their expectation, the mindset, and uh, what exactly they'll be looking forward to in order to you know, solve their problems and uh, mitigate their pr process issues, etc. right? So today, uh, we'll be just trying to understand in the same manner, similar fashion, that what exactly are the best things, the challenges, what we are facing in Agile, and how we can accommodate the best of our testing in the given timeline what we generally have. To get started, the very first thing we are talking about as a process, that what exactly is Agile, right? Now, when we talk about, in a nutshell, Agile is a process where you are trying to do a kind of time boxing, where it's unlike the traditional approaches, where you don't have a longer duration with you, where you can just do whatever you want. Right? You have to decide, you have to prioritize, you have to understand that how exactly things will be implemented in reality. Right? And you are not kind of like driven by yourself. There are certain principles, there are certain expectations from the business which are driving your activities at any point of time. So here, when we talk about Agile, Agile is not traditional. But yes, we can pretty much do a lot of things from the traditional approaches to that in the Agile. But it all depends on what are your key expectations from the process. right? Now when you talk about the process, we are again not considering and contradicting with that manifesto or the core value that process over tools, right? All that concepts, right? Here we are talking mainly about the understanding of what exactly is the need which you need to perform as a part of the process, right? For an example, if I talk about traditional where the customer was left away from what exactly we have been doing, understanding that having a frozen requirement given to you, where you start building up requirement documentations, writing comprehensive detailed information, and then designing it, developing it, and testing it. And post that, the customer gets the first feel and look of what exactly is the product being built. right? And maybe to a certain extent, we are delivering Buffalo with a trunk on it, considering that it is elephant. right? So the question here was that, was I missing anything important to be covered as a part of my interaction with the business? We do understand that human beings are error prone. We are capable of making mistakes. And that's the reason testing came into picture, isn't it? We had developers who were very highly capable of implementing the work. They were the people who were responsible to build the product. But still, we had somewhere some gap. The customers and the end users found the anomalies in our product. Right? And we tried analyzing this theory that where exactly we went wrong. Did we hire wrong developers? Did we hire people who are not qualified to do that job? No. We understood a very common human psychology that you cannot find your own mistakes. Or I would say you can find your mistakes, but not everything. Okay, let me just correct myself there. You are capable of reviewing your work, but not to the 100% extent. You cannot be just proficient in finding your own mistakes, but you are good at finding others' mistakes. It is easy, isn't it? It's quite professional. So you just try to prove that, yeah, you know what, I was just looking at you when you were talking and these are the places where you did something for me wrong. So we called it out as a profession. And we also analyze our academic process, like examination all. When a student has to write an examination of three years, no matter how many times you revise before submitting the paper, you cannot find all your mistakes, right? So what do you do? You give it to the teacher. 
even that teacher is not the person who has written the examination, can very well find out your mistakes, where you went wrong. Now this psychology became the profession in our IT industry. That given that perception of human mindset, that you are good at finding mistakes in what you have not done, we call them as testing genius, right? With the perception of proving that the other people are not up to the mark, right? But with a professional touch for sure. We are not here to blame each other. We are not here to contradict with other parties, other stakeholders, but make sure that we work together to build a quality product, right? So that was the era where we started testing. And today when we say that, come on, we are not giving you enough time to do that, whatever you have in your mind. Of course, there's a timeline required for everything, right? I would like to a little bit take you on the principles of testing as well on that context. We have heard of something called as exhaustive testing is impossible, right? What do you mean by exhaustive testing? When we say exhaustive testing, it means trying out with all possible scenarios, all possible combinations of data and performing that in practice. But first of all, maybe every tester is different in their perception and there's no end to it. If I ask you that, hey, this is a requirement, can you write some test cases? You will go ahead and say, okay, sure, let me write some. I came back in the evening, asked you how many test cases have you written? You said 10. I said, is that all you can write? You said, is that all what I have in time? Right? You came back, I said, okay, fine, take tomorrow's day and do it. You wrote another 10 test cases. I asked you, is that all you can do? So there is no end to this journey, right? Because you don't have an end to the perception. But what is the constraint here? The time factor. That if I give you time, you can pretty much implement all your thought process, implement all your perceptions, and certainly test the product in the best way. But now the question is, do we really have that time? Do we really have that enough bandwidth of performing everything, what comes to our mind? And that was just one tester, right? We may have five to 10 testers in our team, and they are distinct in their nature. So point is, exhaustive testing is impractical to be performed, right? So what we did? We created some techniques to reduce our effort. Came up with our domain-specific practices that, hey, we are driven by ISO 26262. We are driven by the spies or autoser and sort of thing, and then we want to just make sure that whatever we are doing is going in line with that. Because finally, at the end of the day, these are the guys who will ask questions to us. Why did you write this test case? How did you write this test case? Why did you pick this specific technique? Why not the other one, which we recommended you as per the AC level, right? So the questions will be according to that. So this is where we understood that Agile is a not the ordinary traditional process. It has a time boxed session for us, which is like sprint. Sprint gives you freedom of performing whatever you have to cover in that particular sprint, but within the limited time, what approaches can you take to complete all that, what you really want to do in the limited time given to you. Right? So the question starts here. The journey actually begins at this point, that how to perform that efficient testing in the given timeline. Right? So we start with deriving understanding of the dependencies, the risk factors, the complexity of the module, and on top of it, of course, you have the time pressure. Right? So this is where the understanding begins, that when you talk about release planning, which is our first stage of planning out the overall process, for a particular release. In Agile, we don't do the project plan for testing. We don't say like test plan. We rather say release test plan. For a particular release, we are just thinking about that as our short term goal and we are planning out for it. Now that test plan, what you create for the release, will be broken down into different sprints. Right? We cannot accommodate everything as a waterfall model that one phase dedicately we will be getting for three months or two months and we'll be performing all sort of activities, what we have. So here we break down and distribute. We here we break down and distribute that, okay, let's start with the sprint one, with some basic unit tests, right? And following that, we'll be targeting the integrations or interfaces, and slowly we'll be stepping into the system part, and then we'll be looking for anything on top of it, like non-functional testing, right? So that is where the Agile was involved. Like agility gave you the freedom to perform whatever you want to perform, but from the perspective of, given the timeline, how will you best perform it, right? I cannot come up with my exhaustive approach at all in Agile, but I will look forward to perform all that which is critical and crucial to be performed in the given timeline, right? 
So given that we know what is the process, let's talk about the key aspect of our testing being performed, like collaboration in Agile. A test engineer needs to be as motivated as possible in terms of interacting with the other stakeholder. The biggest gap we have seen during this transformation is testers still feel that I'm a part of one particular segment. Right? We are just going to appear when the module comes to us. We hardly see some kind of participation, again based on different organizations, interactions and all. We hardly see testers being participating in early discussions, early forums and all. In fact, they have been sent requests to attend the meeting, but they say, Mera kya kaam hai you know? Let the people fix out things and formalize the requirements, formalize the design, and then we will step in when the test cases are supposed to be created. Now the question was, that is that what you were hired for? Instead, when you were being looking forward to this role as a QA, a formal training did tell you that there's something called as early testing. We can find the effects much earlier in the life cycle. We can find out the issues when the user stories are being written. So collaboration starts right from there. It does not kick off when the testing actually happens. Right? The collaboration kicks off when the requirements are being gathered, a user story is being written. To be frank, as per the protocols of Scrum, we say that user stories are not alone written by the business analyst or the PO. We have a collaborative session where we understand, like, why to find bugs? Come on, man, when you can fix it right while creating it. Like, pair buddy, you know, buddy programming and pair programming, the concepts, these XP of Agile also says the same thing. That if two people are working on the same concept, we'll have two different mindsets doing the job. So we can prevent the bugs, right? The same way here, the testing team has to collaborate much earlier in the life cycle where they can reduce or prevent the bugs to happen because cost of fixing a bug is always high even found later. So the point was that are we really participating there? Are we really contributing there? If we start contributing there and ask questions when the user stories are first written, then I think our defects will be much more reduced and the effort what we need at the time of testing at a later stage will be pretty less. Right? Yes, please. No, but, but the question is if, if the testers uh, start involving uh, during the requirement discussion phase, mm -hmm. then you know, uh, don't you think that you know the tester cannot concentrate much uh, on the on the execution side or on the test case design side because he'll get very limited time in agile, maybe two weeks or three weeks. But for the next sprint, you know, the discussion or the requirement discussion happens much earlier than that particular sprint, right? So maybe in that sense, that how the tester will get enough time to test and also to understand the requirement. Okay. On that note, I would like to take a different conversation here, mm -hmm. right? First of all, do we really have that enough information to start designing test cases at the early stages? We hardly know the product, isn't it? Yeah. With limited information, to be frank. If you are even talking about designing the test cases at that stage, it may be absolute at some point of time. It may not be useful at all. You may have to revisit, rework, and sort of thing. Point is, the better you understand the product, the better your ideas will be, the better your exploration will be, better your thought process will be, ki, okay, let's talk about what to test and how to test the system. And we are talking about that perspective right now. Ki, while building the user stories, you are building your mindset that how this product can be tested. You are not ready with all that information that can really build some rigid test cases and help you to plan out your activities that, okay, unit testing or integration testing and sort of thing can happen in this schedule. We are more worried about that exploratory way, right? When you say Agile, inherently it is what is exploratory testing. Again, what is exploratory testing? Where it gives you the visions, where it gives you the idea, you ask questions to the people, right? The person who is writing the requirement or telling you this requirement, you ask questions to them that, all right, I understand that this is the particular functionality. What if a customer does like this? What if a end user does not have a Google account? What if an end user wants to sign up directly, right? They wouldn't want to share any other credentials. So in that context, what we are trying to convey here is while building the stories, you are not worried about creating the test cases, rather getting that mindset developed that what this product is all about. And then following that, you know what exactly to write, what exactly not to write, and how much to write. Does that answer your question?
Yeah, yeah but uh, one more question is like, sure. which, which is the you know the right stage for the tester to involve? Because whether this is once the requirement and the you know the requirement document is ready, and maybe that is the right stage to involve along with the developers to understand what exactly the you know the requirement, or maybe when it is discussing with the product owners or the business analyst when you know the requirement is not fully ready. So, see, I mean, uh, when we say the principle of early testing. We also understand that cost of fixing a defect is higher at a later stage. Now, what is that later stage means, right? So the point is, if a requirement is formally documented, mm -hmm. and then if we start reviewing it, it's a, it's contributing to rework on the requirement. So that is also a later stage. Okay. So my consent here will be that you start working right from the draft. Mm -hmm. When the first piece of information is shedded to you, you start interacting with the BA. Okay, BA, have you have you written a formal or informal requirement right now, a draft of a user story. Let me ask you a few questions that, who is this profile? Hmm. I don't see a portfolio here. That is a user, administrator, or customer, what is it? Which user persona are we using? Okay, fine. Do we have a clear acceptance criteria with us? Yes. Right? And that too, when the acceptance criteria are written, they are generally written sometimes vague or sometimes uh, incomplete, sometimes which a QA cannot accept. Hmm. Saying that, I understand this is from core technical parameters, but does that really make me believe that it is working fine? Is this what the customer or end user is expected to perform? Right? For example, if I say a vague requirement that I want the performance to be very good, mm -hmm. it's one of the acceptance criteria for my performance testing or performance scenarios. Now, performance to be very good can be anything to anyone. Right? Now, I would say by very good means what? So, I'll ask this question back to my PO or my business analyst. That boss, can you please elaborate these on these five parameters? I even contribute, right? I tell them, tell me what is the response time you're expecting with what number of users. If you say 1,000 users, I'm expecting less than or equal to three seconds. Next clause, tell me what if the users are more than 1,000. So 5,000 users, less than five seconds should be okay, right? And the resources, what are you going to use? So description should contain that. Like what is your answer, CP utilization, and what are the threads and processes, everything. Right? So, point here is to say that the tester can participate as early as possible in the life cycle. Again, not going by the theory, practicality, that you can even just get casually involved with the BA, mm -hmm. say, hey, what sort of information is coming in, what kind of product are we looking at, what kind of expectations they have, what kind of prof profiles they have. So, you will be doing your own mind mapping, that are we really understanding what we are supposed to yeah. test, right? So, I hope that goes in. Yeah. Sure. But does that happen in real world? Because in one week, you see, saying thing is very easy. In one week, ten days, cannot accept everything to be done, right? What you are saying to so ask them, developers will not have time, designers will have not, but they will simply say testing what will come later. So it looks good to listen and to yes. say this, but if you work, you will not get all this thing, what you are saying right now. So we are actually practicing that in my organization, right? I, I know it's difficult to get there. It took five years to get there, but then we are doing that. And we have everything so, Nee, I totally agree with you. It really sounds very interesting and very good to hear such things and it uh, takes time for sure. But I would tell you something more on what you have just asked here. Uh, that I had an instance in my past organization where I was working. Uh, when the sprint planning, let's take a sprint itself, okay? Let's talk, not talk about release or project and all. Let's take a sprint, sprint one. The day one, the sprint planning happened, right? And during the sprint planning, the PO took all the effort to explain the stories to the whole team. In fact, testers were a participant there, right? They were listening to it. So PO was only driven to the designer, driven to the developer, that hey, this is the story where the customer is asking to do this, this, this is what I should do, then this is what should happen, right? The formal way of explanation. And explain the description, etc. cetera, and all. The developer raised the hand, say, let me take it up. I've done something similar in past, so let me take it up. So he assigned some estimates to that, and he said, I'll take the accountability of this, I'll finish this. And the tester did not ask any questions there. Okay, just one instance. The tester said, fine, let him develop, right? We'll ask him what you have developed, and we will test it. It will come on day seven, day five, day six, whatever. So the point was, why didn't we ask a question during the sprint plan? We can ask those questions that, hey, as per me, if I have to test this development story, I need these attributes to be there. I need this information to be there. 
right? So that transformation will certainly take time because we are not used to it. We are testers, right? The quality people, we only put the quality check seal at the gate when the product ships outside, right? We do a quality check with the checklist and say, yes, 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 all these things are happening and it is pretty much on track, let's go for it. But the point is, are we really interacting with the other stakeholders at the right time, right? So you should be not able to just like build product, you should be actually able to ask questions. That's the most important thing for a keyword. I think the more than technical traits, the question is, are you really aware of what you're supposed to test? And that can begin at any point of time. Questions can be asked when you're a kid, you can ask a question when you're a professional, and there's no end to it. Any other questions? One question. Uh, see, in the sprint planning meeting, do you explain the, the user stories, or this is just a, you know, the plan Summarize that, it. right? Summarize it. See, so explanation, again, I'm not going to talk about it on like for 30 minutes or something on each story. Point is, I have 20 stories shortlisted for a particular sprint. I've pulled it like on the backlog, prioritized it. So I'm asking team right in the order that, hey, the story one, the ask of the user is that as a user, I should be able to log in. Expectation is they should have a username field, password field, forgot password. This is not a KD session. Not at all. Not a KD session. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No problem. Just to add to that, there is a pre-planning session which happens on a, on every sprint. I think everybody knows that. So during that session is where this conversation happens. To make yeah. this actually happen and make this realize uh, is uh, obviously the developers, the QA will be in their own mindset of developing their current sprint user story. It's a responsibility of a scrum master to facilitate that, take the time out, block the time on their calendars, give them a pre-context switching time so that they can actually focus on the pre-planning session. Help them, help the product owner, the entire team prioritize based on the effort, prioritization, the sequencing of the industry. So it's more of a culture. Uh, it, it, it certainly happens if the scrum masters really want that to happen. That's exactly, that's what the agility stands for, right? Every organization has their own way of implementing it. Every organization has their, you know, different principles to perform agile in their own way. And again, it varies from domain to domain, isn't it? When we talk about testing is context dependent, of course I cannot test a safety critical device how I test an e-commerce website. Right? So that is completely different from each other and they have their own driven things like I have regulatories, I have compliances which make me perform certain specific things. Right? Any other questions on the collaboration part team? So the conclusion on the collaboration is the testers need to get involved. The tester needs to ask several questions to different <coughs> stakeholders to get a mind mapping done and once we have that, I think we can pretty much do better testing in the given timeline itself. The next important thing is about planning. Because again, when we talk about any activity, we always look forward to understand that, hey, are we really having a better plan available for us? Right? Have we planned out things in line with what we are going to do? Again, talking about the traditional approaches that gave you ample amount of information that, hey, this is how all this schedule will be, this is what the tools we'll be using, this is what our entry and exit criteria are, and doing a very comprehensive plan, which at the end equally says that this plan is not fixed. Right? Conditions apply with the asterisk on top of it. That as of now, with the given information what we have, right, this is what our plan and layout is. But it is subjected to change, depending on what we see. And again, given a test manager, Right? If you talk about being a test manager, they have been trained or given that insight that boss, don't stick to the plan which you created initially. Be participant, be an active participant throughout the process. Look forward to what is evolving, how the product is getting built. Because when you start interacting with something, you realize things are not how we thought about it. When you know, the customer was explaining the expectation in a very professional kind of, their professional manner, that I want a very big animal, okay, which has four legs, one trunk, one tail, and big ears. I thought, oh, okay. So he's looking for a big giant kind of animal with four legs, okay, one trunk, one tail, and big flat ears. So what we did, we caught up a buffalo mm -hmm. and put some artificial trunk in front of his head. We attached some extra flaps and we said, sir, the product is ready, would you like to accept it? When he came for alpha testing, or the acceptance testing, he said, what exactly this is? He said, he, he is, he is a poor, here is an animal with a trunk and front, you have four legs, you can ride on it. Plus, we are giving some delightful experience to you, it can also give milk, which you never asked for. 
Oh, really? Right? So you understand the difference here, right? The explanation when it is initial, in facious, we may have different perceptions towards the product. The point is, when we continue working with it, then we realize what exactly is the ask, what exactly is the expectation. So point here is that you may have a outline with you, but not exactly a plan. You may have an outline with you, that too for a particular sprint. Now in Agile, planning happens in two different stages. One is for the entire release, and one every single sprint. That's the reason you close the sprint with a retrospective. But did we do that? How did we do it? Can we change something? Can we stop doing something? Can we add something new to it? So we transform it. In traditional, the closure happens only once at the end of the project. So in Agile, we do it quite often. So that there is a room for improvement and change every single sprint. So we don't look forward to have a rigid plan, first of all. Especially in Agile again. We don't plan out. We just have an outline. We have a perception. We have a mindset that what are we supposed to do for this sprint. And we are just limited to that. We are not worried about what's next. We are not looking forward to the next few sprints at all. We are just worried about, in this sprint, will I be able to deliver my stories or not? How? That is what you answer. How? How will you deliver it? That is, what is the ask? What are the expectations? What are the key goals which you have to achieve? And then, once you are having those questions from the previous discussion, the theory from the sprint planning, then you can certainly answer them during the sprint. And once you have done that, it's an achievement, right? And based on this analysis, like the testing which you perform within the sprint, you will be able to derive the future plans for it. Like, okay, right now we saw that there is a complex object on my screen, which I am testing right now in unit testing or something. Then later, it may create a problem when it comes to interfaces, because it has the same issue as per my past experience, right? So your experience, your questions, your knowledge about it can help you to build a better testing within that particular iteration, right? So the planning part is not to waste your time in setting up goals for the entire release or setting up goals for the future sprints. It's more important that what are you doing right now and how this doing right now will help you to build a better strategy for the next one, okay? Because everything gets driven by what you're doing right now. Do we have any questions here? Sure. Talking about the accommodating our test activities and work products in Asia, which is another important constraint to understand that how exactly my activities can be organized. People have a question that every single level of testing has an aspect of it, has an important objective for it. So do we really skip anything or do we really have accommodating time for doing everything for a product? No, again, the in-spoke and out-spoke would be a parameter to start with, where you can start understanding that how exactly my activities can be organized, how exactly my uh, activities can be accommodated, what levels can be performed at what point of time. Sometimes you don't perform all the levels within the sprints. Okay, it's good to, it's good to move out some of the levels outside the sprint. For example, the concept of N plus one. In the regular sprints, you only perform unit integration system to a certain extent. You might have performed regression. You might have been taking care of some initial performance testing or security initial, right? Now the point is, if, what if I see that it's getting very tight, very, you know, limited to perform everything, then I push some of the things outside. I may have one or two members within my team or outside my team who are specialized in performance and security testing. And once we hand over the sprint or complete the sprint, we push this to them. That, okay, we'll continue with the sprint too. You go ahead with performance testing of sprint one or whatever clarity you need at this point of time. Right? So it's always good to accommodate all your activities within the sprint as far as it is not hampering your end goal of the sprint and you're not able to achieve the end goal of it. Right? So following that, you can have it outside the sprints as well where you can have a separate team in fact doing it or probably you can even outsource it who will be coordinating with you in that particular phase and performing some activities outside the sprint. Talking about the work products. A lot of time we have heard about Agile that work products are not required there. Work products being your, your documentations, given that we don't invest a lot of time writing comprehensive documentation, because it's more about working piece of code. 
The question is, do we really not need any documents? We need. We need some kind of documentation which at least assures us that where we are, how far we are, how much coverage we have achieved, how much you know, uh, achievement we have done towards the end goal of the overall product. So the point is, we may create certain specific documentation, a lightweight documentation, but yet important ones, which would give the return back. So what do we do in that case? Instead of writing reports, we take help of matrices. The matrices are simple KPIs or simple calculations like burn down chart, velocities and sort of thing, where you can populate these matrices as your reports and the tracking of every single work product. Now, I mean, I, as we see that we don't need a test plan now, all we need to have a mind mapping for the team, given that you have a small team, you can just convey that to your team that hey, the plan for the sprint is this and these are the things we are going to do as per the priority. Now following that, if anything happens, like okay, do we need to write test cases? Understand the significance of it. In case you are driven by certain standards, there will be a need of some documentation that at least high level test cases are required. So ISO or maybe ASPIs, these people will be driving you saying that, was I need a documentation for what you are doing. So have a high level documentation to fulfill the expectation of these bodies. Other than that, if you think, again exploratory also if you talk, we say that it is documentless execution, you know, testless execution. But the question is, do we really document anything exploratory? Yes, when it fails, right? Because don't forget, when a tester is executing something, he is or she is all alone when interacting with the system. What went wrong? The other stakeholders cannot understand. Right? So we document things when it fails. So the protocol says that if anything is identified as a failure, you write a little formal test case, log a defect and track. So that it also not helps you to let the stakeholder know what happened, but also helps you identify the key test cases which can help you in the future. Just because you documented, you can have it in your repository which will drive you in future testing that hey, these are the good test cases which has resulted into getting the box. Right? So that could be a knowledge base for you tomorrow. So you are just step by step building up in a high level. Right? So yes, we do accommodate work products but to a certain extent where it is necessary and in such a way with the objectives that really you want to build a knowledge base for tomorrow, then only write those test cases which help you to defining that, hey, these are my optimum test cases, right? So, any questions here? Yes, please. What are the good, effective matrices to pass on the communication of testing progress? We have the BSR, we have the defect metric. Any other which can give us snapshot of our activities, you know, and let the stakeholders also be aware of what's happening in a minimal way? Sure, why not? See, there are, see, first of all, we say there are five primary dimensions which can be measured. Right? We have defects, test, risk, coverage, and confidence. Mm -hmm. right? So if I talk about the test, which you said, like, we have several things like how much time is spent on preparing test cases, right? from that case. Mm -hmm. If I have to keep a track being a manager, that how much time people are investing on designing test cases. Is that really optimum or are we wasting a lot of time? Second, how many written test cases are beneficial for us? Could be another matrix. Then talk about executions. How many test cases have been executed per day? How many test cases have resulted into finding a defect? How many test cases were skipped? The reason for that. How exactly, it was, what was the reason for it? Right, the root causes. How many defects were found due to a collaboration issue? Like we did not ask the questions, it was related to misunderstanding of requirement, but it was related to design issues, which we could have done in design forums, right? So we try to even find out the reasons for improvement. Like the clauses for the improvement of the process. So similarly, every single activity can be monitored. You do have 100 plus matrices available and you can certainly deep dive here to see what could be best, best applicable to your process and organization. Sure. So, you said that there are a couple of activities that testers do can be taken out of the sprint and then work like N plus one. Is it the recommended approach or if it is then how we'll be able to deliver which is promised as part of sprint delivery because testing is not done completely? 
See again, when we talk about our recommendations, there's few things which are recommended by Scrum Guide. Okay? And that's only the recommendation we have in Agile. Other than that, whatever we practice is driven by our exercises, driven by the way we work and what kind of product we are testing. And it's certain, certainly different from each other. Right? So we cannot be uh, driven by a hard-coded rule or something. Now when we are talking about N plus 1, it is one of the practices, again I would not say that it is hard-coded somewhere or it is a recommended thing, but it's all about that the expectation of a sprint is to deliver the functionality. So your goal, what is defined there, will determine this, will you do this as a part of your sprint or not. So in that case, say for example, both the scenarios, if you say my goal is to deliver the functionality, performance and security each sprint, then instead of having two week sprint where you are not able to do it, you will make your sprint lengthy, like three weeks, okay? Because you have this as a criticality as a part of your goal of the sprint. But if you say no, it's not a part of my goal, but given that performance cannot be measured in the initial days, you might be just reviewing my code that is it really having the code which may not leak or which may not create memory leaks. So performance testing actually is not happening. No dynamic testing is happening in initial days. What we are doing as a performance engineer, we are reviewing your code to check that if it is written in the way which will support the performance tomorrow. So these kind of activities is what we push. Initial performance, initial security, initial usability. But these all levels do happen in detail with dynamic executions after system testing. So if as far as that initial part is considered, you may pretty much accommodate it outside. If you think that's a criticality for you to accommodate it within the sprint, you may have a little lengthier sprint. If you are not able to do it. So I have a couple of follow-ups on, on what Sachin asked. Please. Uh, you know, normally it is you know, potentially suitable product is what we talk about. So, and we also talk about working product. Mm. So, my question is, is testing a part of the definition of done or not? Definitely. If it is, if, if it is, then how do you uh, respond to what Sachin asked? Okay. Second question is, uh, you know, if it is included as a part of the definition of done. And then you just spoke about performance as a separate activity after system testing and stuff like that. So would you need separate sprints only for performance testing or something like that? And if that is the thing, then is it accommodated in the entire uh, project plan? So, two questions. Yeah. Sure. So I will start from the project plan. Okay, so your project plan will determine what is in your scope in this release and what is not in scope. Given that I may not concentrate on all my non-functional parameters right in the first release or might be in the initial sprints, right? I may be looking forward to have a stable product first which can be utilizable in functional form and then I can top up with the non-functional characteristics, right? So given here that, but my performance team is not someone which will appear after release one. That hey, the scope item of performance testing is in release two after six months, then it does not mean the performance team should be unaware of what's happening for the first seven to eight sprints. So I will keep them involved in terms of, okay, go ahead and start reviewing my code, what is being written right now at this point of time, which may result into a better performance tool or similarly design. As we all understand, quality characteristics, the non-functional parameters are heavily dependent on our design and architecture. So again, design team will, like performance team is required to coordinate with the design team and understand the architecture being built today. Not when the system is ready and then we perform, execute performance testing or execute security testing, execute. Right? That would be too late for us. So this is where, uh, you know, the things will be taken care. And now I'm talking about that sprint part. That within the sprint, if I'm not able to accommodate, the point here was that if in case your plan says, that it is currently for the release one, it is not in scope. We'll be doing dynamically in the release two, but performance team can come and review our work. Okay. And definition of done, of course. Definition of done in that, again, if the criteria says that, because definition of ready and definition of done are set of my criterions. So the criterion, if says that the performance review is a part of it, then we will accommodate it. If it says no, it's not a part of it to declare definition of done, then it may be performed outside. Okay, sure. Any other question? Yeah, I am having one question. 
So in Agile, I have seen like we plan the story, we create the card, and developer working and is moving to QA, then done. But most of the time, the card it is not completing on the time. If they say they will take like two story point, it means two days. It go for three days, four days sometime, and the QA they are getting at the last moment. So like how to handle those issues in the Agile? See, again, uh, this has been a global issue, first of all, yeah. <laughs> and getting enough time to test or get some card. Some, some metric, like the planning is issue, like how to mitigate those things. Uh, see, I would like to have a kind of discussion on this here. Again, personal experience, when you talk about the cards not being given to you on time, which is a global challenge, like day 7 or day 8, or maybe day 9 is when you start getting the cards for testing. Now the question is, are we looking forward to do everything from scratch on the day 9? Right? Because if you are starting for the plan, if you are starting for the you know writing test cases or everything right when you get the story with you, that is actually it for sure. So in the sprint planning, you've got to know what your ask of the story is, what exactly the expectations is. I think seven days are enough for you to get prepared at what you have to test. Right? And when you get the module at the day eight or day seven, wherever you're getting, the executions are only the thing which you're supposed to perform. Execution, that is interacting with the system and finding the anomaly. That's the only two things which you're supposed to do when you get the module, when you get the card assigned to you. Prior to that, whatever your intentions are, whatever your uh, you know possibilities are, the techniques are, the data are, environment is, we should all be ready before that. So if in case we are trying to do these work, when the card is assigned to us, that's where it gets linked. So again, for, there are many other reasons, factors influencing this, that we get card in the you know late in the life of sprint that certainly can influence it. But the major intentions are that we start doing everything right from scratch when we get the card. Then we start reading the story. Then we ask the question to the PO that this acceptance criteria is not clear. Can we amend it? Can we get it clarified? So you are on board. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, got it. So I think planning will right. No, Pre preparing your work preparing. other than execution. When the sprint planning is done after that. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. I have one question. Regarding, for example, construct your own mobile testing, and there are a number of devices where you will trigger different problems depending on the device settings, whatever it is. In such scenarios, all those will be under the backdrop because either the team will not have such devices. For example, I worked on multiple devices for my last project mm -hmm. where I could cover up to 18 to 19. But right now we are holding only five to six session devices. In such scenarios, all would be like considered as backlog. So are we like uh, in the agile that methodology, are we able to create a screen for the backlog or we need to push? Because there are several things as per the market. For example, 2021, 20, 2022, we have many more for the series which were released where we don't have that MVP for that. When, because we have particular market analysis as per the 99, 2018. So in that how we need to because it is a solution, again it is a global problem exactly. for every PA, but being a PA for mobile testing for years is the thing we are facing for every organization of project. See again, having the uh, prioritization on the devices would be the first thing. That again, there could be n number of possibilities of what devices are being used by the people. Right. In budget allocation. Right? Budget allocation is another constraint. You cannot just afford to buy every single device with every different version of it and then test it. That's the first thing. Second thing is, if you think there are few initial levels of testing which can be performed in your regular sprints, some parallel sprinting can also happen, where a set of QA team will be doing the other devices testing outside the sprint, but parallel sprinting. That means you finish the work, hand over for the rest of the devices, and the other team can parallelly perform it. So it may be done parallelly, or it may be done with the N plus one model, where you are doing sprint one of the initial functional testing on regular devices, and when you move to sprint two, the team two does a parallel sprint with your sprint two, their sprint one kicks off with the other devices. So at the same time, the bugs can be immediately reported in the other devices while you are still in that particular flow. In real time, either there will be problem or the design because we don't have the devices. That's the fact. Yeah, I think uh, that's the last thing what I wanted to quickly talk about uh, when you said
sorry. When you talk about the tester skills, uh, I think we have been aware of everything about being in HR as a tester. So more importantly, it is the collaboration. And uh, the other important things, of course, makes you more self-motivated. That being a self-organizer, like how exactly you are aligning yourself with every single activity, how exactly your participation is within the team stakeholders, and how more the questions you ask in the sessions, right? In that sessions, which is related to your sprints, that every single session, be it a retrospective or QA has to participate, sprint planning, backlog roaming, where you can contribute that, hey, we have a dependency and we cannot prioritize this. Or there is a feedback which is more important to be resolved, which is related to this bug. So this could be prioritized. So my point here at the end on this particular slide is to say that a QA certainly have lots of challenges, lots of complaints to the process, to the management. But the question is, are we really doing our bit to contribute, right? And again, I'm not looking forward to challenge all our QAs, but the point here is that if we really start following our principles strictly, that, hey, I'm not going to pick up this story until this acceptance criteria is written. I don't think there's anyone else who could say that I'm telling you pick up this story, right? Because who is going to take the accountability on that? When there's no acceptance criteria, there's no clarity on the story, I have to raise that question at the moment and then say that until as it is written, let the development happen, let the design happen, I don't care. But before it comes to QA, it should be clear. This is my ask, these are my questions. If you have the answers to this, I'll pick up in this print or it gets to the next print, simple. Now people understand that QAs are getting contributing here, getting participated here and they are holding their authorization. Right? When you start showcasing your presence, that's where we get that respect of being valuable, being resourceful to the organization. And I think this is where the skill set is just not limited to technicality, the domain understanding, and the principles and techniques. More about how you manage your work within the process of the life cycle. Right? How, where exactly you understand the significance of being available and being responding to the queries or asking your own questions. Right? So that's where the agile tester skills will make you more uh, kind of you know resourceful and problem solving at your own level. Is there anything else? Okay. Can we take last question? If anyone having? Uh, Alright, so I think that's all what I had from my session for you. And uh, you can always reach out to me. Uh, my name is Dinesh Kumar Singh, as I told you. I'm available on LinkedIn and YouTube as well. I do have uh, two of my portals where I keep uh, doing a lot of technical talks. So if you wish to uh, stay in touch and look forward to more content, you can always follow there. And uh, you can even ask your questions. I do a live session every Saturday evening uh, for all my audience to respond to their queries. So feel free to be a participant there as well. Right? So thank you so much for being here. Thank you.